Hello everyone. In the previous few videos, we have introduced how to write GPU programs without caring too much about performance. Starting from this section, we're going to introduce how to write high-performance GPU programs. Writing GPU pro program is very different from writing a CPU program because you really have to understand how GPU works and the GPU architectures to be able to optimize your GPU program performance. So in this particular section, we're going to introduce AMD GPU, AMD GPU internals to focus on the GPU mechanisms and the architecture so that we can help you write high-performance GPU programs. In this particular video, we're going to introduce the AMD GPU family. So we're going to go through the AMD GPU development history to help you understand what are the GPUs available and how it developed until the uh, GPUs that we have today. The first GPU we want to introduce is the AMD Radeon HD 7970 GPU. It is released in December 2011. Before that, AMD is basically using the technology or the architecture that is acquired from ATI. The architecture is named as Graphics Core Next, GCN architecture. And the chip name is GFX600. So I want to let you know that on a GPU like what you see on the right side, it's not only a single GPU chip. The GPU chip is the core to this uh, GPU product, but you also have a PCB, you also have memory chips, power supply, other peripherals, uh, including the fan and also the display ports, um, this type of uh, peripherals on, for the chip. But the core is the chip, and the chip is named as GFX600. The transistor size used uh, by this chip is 28 nanometer technology. In about one year later, in November 2013, AMD released a GPU called R9290. And the architecture is a newer version of GCN architecture. It's called GCN2. And the chip is 701. So the chip has three numbers in it. The chip name has three numbers in it. The first one is the major version. The second one is the minor version. And the third one is the revision. So as you can see, this one is a big generation upgrade from the previous generation, which is the GFX6 series. And the transistor size is 28 nanometer technology. So be careful that GFX701 is not one-to-one -one mapped with R9290. It, this chip may also be supporting other GPUs. For example, you can see here, in about one and a half year later, in June and August 2015, AMD released uh, the GCN3 architecture. The chip is another big generation upgrade from the previous uh, GPUs introduced. So these two GPUs are named as Fury X and Fury Nano. GFX803 is supporting the two GPUs here. The only difference between these two GPUs is Fury X is powered, is cooled by water, while R9 Nano is cooled by the fan on top of it. And they support different uh, base frequency, so Fury X can run slightly faster and generate slightly more heat. The transistor size is still 28 nanometer technology. And GFX 803 is still being used in the GCN4 architecture. So the chip has no major difference, but there are some other differences. And for example, in the memory technology, it's being upgraded in this uh, particular GPU products. So the, there are two GPU products that are in the Polaris series. One is RX480, one is RX580. They are released about one year apart. The chip is still same. The transistor size is still same, 28 nanometer technology. Now, after that, we also have this MI series GPUs. It's actually released before the RX480 GPU. Um, the MI stands for Machine Intelligence. It's another product line that is focused on general purpose computing. But in terms of chip, it's still the GFX803 chips. And the architecture is the same. Transistor size is also the same. So this is a very good example to show the versatility of the GFX803 chips. It's 
is supporting at least five GPU products, and this chip is being slightly modified to support different markets. Um, the Fury X GPU is for the high-end gaming market, 48580 is for the mid-range gaming market, and M8 GPU is for the general-purpose computing market. So after the release of GFX803 GPU, AMD upgraded their GPU product and the major generation to GFX900, and the architecture is renamed as GCN5. And the commercial product name is named as Vega. Starting from Polaris and Vega, AMD starts to use star names to name their GPU product. And the, the representative products are AMD RX Vega 56 and 64. They released in August 2017. And as you can see, the transistor size is reduced from 28 nanometer technology to 14 nanometer technology. So we have much more transistors on the same chip size. And also we have this AMD Radeon 7 GPU. It's also GCN5. And the chip name is GFX906. So it's not a major upgrade from the previous generation. But why it's important is it is the first 7 nanometer GPU that, uh, that is available in the market. After this particular GPU is released, AMD is seeing a problem with some nanometer technology. With so many transistors, we can have much more computer resources and more cache resources on one chip. But with, as we add more resources to the GPU chip, we cannot really convert the amount of resources to performance. So we have a scalability problem. So previously we have an instinct product line and um, RX product line. But AMD start to believe that having one architecture may not work well for both the gaming uh, market and the general purpose computing market. So they start to separate architecture into RDNA architecture and the CDNA architecture. The RDNA architecture the first product is released in July 2019, and the first product is named as RX5700 XT GPU. The architecture is RDNA1. The chip is named as GFX1010. So the first 10 is the major generation number, is the 10th generation of AMD GPU, and the minor version is 1, and the revision is 0. The transition size is still 7 nanometer technology. Later on, by supporting some other new features, AMD released the RDNA 2 GPU that is represented by the RX 6800 XT and the AMD Radeon Pro W6800 GPU. On the other side, we have CDNA GPUs. It is re uh, released in November 2020, and um, there's only one CDNA 1 GPU that is M1100. Although the architecture name is named as CDNA, but from the chip name, you can see it's still the nice major generation. So although this one is released later than the RDNA architecture, it's actually closer to the previous generation of the Vega GPU. So Vega is 900 and Radeon 7 is 906. This one is 908 and it's also using 7 nanometer technology. But the big difference between the CDNA architecture and the traditional Vega architecture is CDNA architecture added the matrix core in the computing units. More recently, in November 2021, AMD released this GPU named as MI210 and MI250. It's, they are very similar GPUs. As you can see on the right, these GPUs look very different from previous uh, generations, but the, the chip is not that different. The chip is named as GFX908. A is the hexadecimal number that representing 10. It's the 10th revision of the GFX8, uh, GFX9 series GPU. The architecture is named as CDNA2. It's a big technology tran uh, transform because it's using 6 nanometer technology and it also uses chiplet technology. So within one big GPU chip, there are multiple chiplet. So multiple chiplet can provide much higher computing capability than a traditional single chip GPU product. And because of the chiplet te technology, this GPU can use much more power than a traditional GPU can, and can generate much more heat. So that's why it needs a much larger heat sink on top of it. So as a summary, 
We have introduced seven big generation of AMD GPUs. We have GFX, GFX6, GFX7, 8, 9, 10. So these big generations also represents the different ISAs, different instruction set. That means if we have a program that is compiled for GFX9, without recompiling the program, we cannot really run this program on a GFX8 GPU. They're not compatible. Also, we have introduced some major AMD GPU chips like GFX 803, 906, 908, 908A, 1010, and 1030. In this particular uh, series of tutorial, we're basically going to use 906 GPUs, 908 GPUs, and also 1030 GPUs. In the next video, we're going to see what the machine is. We're going to introduce the CDA assembly.